Hello and welcome to another Godot tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can access code from another script and another node. So this will mean we can uh, call a function that's in another script on another node. So it's it, or look at or like get a variable from that as well. So it's pretty simple but it is quite useful. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, first of all, is we're gonna add a node by coming up here and we're gonna click this plus. And I'm gonna come down here to spatial and you can use any type you like, just spatials that the node type I'm gonna to use today. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. Um, so now that we've done that, we're gonna also go ahead and click this plus button again. You can also go control A if you like. And we're gonna come down to spatial. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna uh, by the way, when I do that, I'm just double clicking. You can also come down here and click create. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and right click, add a script, and I'm going to leave this built in just because it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to come down here to this bottom one and I'm going to create another script. And this is going to be built in. Now the problem right now is it's kind of hard to see the difference between them. So you, uh, you might actually want to save them and give them a name. Uh, but it's fine for now. So I'm just going to put a thing up here just so I know. Um, hash tag node one. So I'm just going to do that so I know that this is the node one and this is the other node. All right. So first of all here, we can go ahead and just, just make sure I'm on the right script. I'm going to select this just to make it easier. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this because it's not needed. And... Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add a function. So let's create a function. So you go func, so just just a shortened version of function. And then you're going to type in a name you want. So let's say run code. And I'm going to put two brackets and then I'm going to go ahead and put that on the end. And so here's our first function created. One thing to note as this is just like a normal function anyway, so you can go ahead and say, oh, I wanna uh, have some stuff come through as here as well, so I wanna input some stuff when I use it from the other one. So let's go ahead and go num, num for number, and what we're gonna go ahead and do with that um, number that we passed through, first of all, we're just gonna go ahead and go print, and we're gonna have a num, all right? So we're going to go ahead and print that number. And then we're going to re, oh, re, gosh, I can't type today. Return. We're going to go ahead and return that number. So we're going to num. But it's also going to be times by 10. So, okay. So it's a very simple function, but it should work for what we need. So what we're going to go ahead and do is come up here. And we're going to click on that. And what we're going to go ahead and do is in this on ready function, we're going to go ahead and delete all of this. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and access that script. But first of all, we need to access that node. So um, instead of writing the big long string to access it every time, I just want to have a variable that says node and then it has basically all the code to access it. So let's go ahead and go create a variable. So we're going to go var, and this is going to be, um, actually, we're not going to create it in here. It's just autocomplete doesn't work quite correctly when you try to create it out of this ready function if you try to create it up here. So I don't know why, but I'm going to go var, um, let's say node is equal to get, node and the node we want to get is this special uh, sp spatial I always say special for some reason now if i'd done this out of here for some reason it doesn't do that autocomplete so i just always do it in here to get that nice autocomplete so let's go ahead and cut copy this out and then just delete it and here i'm just going to go pass just so the script doesn't break while i do this and then i'm going to go ahead and paste this in here and if i go ahead and change it you can see there's an error now, I'm not 100% sure why we get this error, but it's very easy to fix. I think the reason is it comes before um, ready and it's just not created when it gets to the right part or something. I'd, I'm not sure, but the easy way to fix it is all you've got to do is go on ready. 
And what that will do is it basically, I'm pretty sure it initializes it before everything else. Um, and you can see we get that problem goes away and we can actually use this now. So let's go ahead and go create our script. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and go node. So what we're doing here now, we can access the script. So let's go node dot, and I'm gonna go here, um, yep. Yeah. All right, it's actually really simple and I can't believe I almost forgot that. So all we're gonna go ahead and do is get the name of the variable. So it was uh, run code, I think. Anyway, you can see the autocompletes already bring it up. And as you remember, we put a number there. So we're gonna put in a number here. So let's go 45 and then let's go ahead and close this with a bracket. So now what you should see is actually nothing will happen except it will print a number but we also want to see the number it returns. So let's go ahead and put this in a print function. So let's go ahead and go print and then put a bracket there. And then we're going to put a bracket on the other side. Now that we've done that and we run the code, um, this scene has never been saved before. Yes, and we just got to save it. I'm just going to save it with this normal thing that it adds. And now we should play it and it hasn't, this scene's never been defined before. Okay. Just super easy. Anyway, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to play. And as you can see down here in the output, you can see that it's 45 and 450, which I'm pretty sure is correct. I can't remember how much I times it by, but anyway, yep, it's all good. So let's say we want to access a variable. So I'm going to create a variable here. It's going to be var um, name equals, um, just go John. So you can see we have a variable here, and you, as you can see, we don't have that problem just because if, it, if it's a node one, if it's like a node path, I always find that we have that problem. Um, but it doesn't seem to show up here when you just do it something like a string or something. So we can easily just have it here without the on ready. But anyway, what we're gonna go ahead and do is come back up to the top, to this top script, and we're gonna access that variable. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and there's two different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the first way first. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go print. Now the reason I'm just doing print is just like before, so we can actually see that it is accessing it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go code dot, and then it's going to be name. Oh, sorry, not code. What am I doing? It's going to be node. It's going to be the same one that we we're accessing before and it's gonna be dot name. Now you can see it's red here, but it actually will work. So if we go ahead and click play, as you can see, it's printed the name down here. Uh, the other way we can go ahead and do it is we can go ahead and go get, and that's all we're gonna do. We're not actually getting anything, we're just getting it. And then we're gonna say um, name, I believe it is. So uh, it's just name all lowercase, I'm pretty sure. And that's going to be in string form, so it knows which one to get. Now, if you go ahead and click play, yes, it was not all lowercase, good. All right. So one thing, um, I'm not sure if this actually works, but if I go ahead and come down here and copy and paste this, um, we go, let's go, get rid of the print here. If you go ahead and go um, equals. Bob, Bob, and then we go ahead and click play. So no, that doesn't work. So um, what you see here is it's not, it's just printing the name twice and it's not actually changing the name. So the way we can change it is to just get rid of this and go name the, the normal way and now it should equal Bob. As you can see before when we used, just used the get, it wasn't working, but if you go node and then just the um, the variable name by itself and then go equals and it'll work. Anyway, th this looks like there's a problem, but there isn't actually a problem. So that all works great. As well as that, if you want to go ahead and detect if a, a, variable, ex a variable exists, it's pretty easy. All we're going to go ahead and do is go if uh, node dot get and then we put the name. So it's name and is not equal so that estimation mark in the equals means not equal to and we're going to say not equal to null 
And if you don't know, null means nothing, like there's nothing there, not even a zero, it's, it just doesn't exist. If it's not equal to that, then we'll run this, so we're gonna print, and we're gonna go, yes. Let's put a few S's because we're so happy. And you, um, so I'll just quickly explain this to you again, just in case you didn't get it. So we're just basically checking if this exists. Um, I didn't really need to explain that again. But as you can see, this is pretty basic. It allows us to run functions. It allows us to get the name, uh, sorry, get variables and uh, change what variables equal to and detect even if variables exist. So this can be really useful. I used it in my game for uh, like interacting. So on objects I wanted to interact with, I would have a function in there called interact. And basically that'd be called when I interacted with that object. So I could kind of just have my player, all they needed to do was click E and then it would run whatever code I wanted in that script. Now I had a few more things to make sure that it was an object I could interact with um, and all that kind of stuff. But this really is a nice, easy way you can kind of access code in other objects and it, just, it works really nice and simple. But anyway, if you have any questions about this tutorial, I'll try to help you as much as pop possible. What am I saying? And if you have any ideas for tutorials, uh, I would love to hear them. I might not make them straight away, but I will put them to my list of ideas because it, sometimes it can be hard to come up with ideas for tutorials. So I'd love to hear any ideas that you have for tutorials. Um, but anyway, have a great week. Keep making games and I hope to come out with more tutorials in the future. I know they've been a bit slow. Uh, it's just I don't know what to make tutorials on. It, and I'm learning, also learning Godot myself. So anyway, have a great week. Goodbye.